You often hear that people gravitate more to either Madrid or Barcelona. Like the age-old Melbourne and Sydney debate, one city is more progressive, rich in street art, and has a more vibrant nightlife, whereas the other is more iconic, an economic powerhouse with beaches lining the horizon. And to my surprise, I actually found Barcelona the victor. Contrasting every other trip I've done, my month in Spain was actually with an organised tour, a travel writing course through Global Hobo, which receives all my recommendations. Sitting in the central coast of Catalonia, Barcelona strikes many of the major beats you expect from Spain. Cool breezes through cobbled alleys, wine with city views, clubs running until midday the next day, and a revolutionary atmosphere. Definitely, in the summer of this year, revolution and independence still define Barcelona. You would stumble across protests and, more commonly, crane your neck upward and see the Catalonian flag draped from balconies as an incessant, quiet reminder that this city is boiling to revolt. It was a surreal sensation reading George Orwell's homage to Catalonia while sweltering in Barcelona's dry heat. Sure, an immense cliché, but wholly worthwhile, because seeing the Placa de Catalonia referenced in the context of Spain's civil war, and traversing that pigeon-infested square as a tourist 80 years later, carries a sentiment that's difficult to articulate. It makes a city feel older, richer, and possessing a narrative you're now part of. As a coastal city backing onto mountains, Park Well and the Bunkers are where you'll find your glamour shots. Couples painstakingly lining up those scrumptious grand photos where locals and travellers will plonk down for picnics and wine. La Sagrada Familia, the iconic cathedral, has a daunting presence for half a minute, but lingering outside feels like bashing your way through an Old Testament marketplace with stall owners and scam artists harassing you every two steps. Evenings are easily lost among the bars or clubs like Razzmatazz, which to Australians are colossal and entirely foreign, with a DJ belonging to each of the dozen dance floors. You just have to make sure to get in early. But to me, it's the old town, the Gothic Quarter, which is the meat of the city. Crammed alleys with laundry hanging on overhead lines, opening into cafe courtyards and titanic cathedrals appearing between market stores as you round another corner. If you're by the Gothic Quarter, it'd be a shame to pass up the Museum of the History of Catalonia. Making use of my university discount months after graduating, the ticket price was slashed to about 3 euros. For the price of a Sydney soy flat white, I found myself with access to two floors dedicated to the peoples who inhabited Catalonia, from the Paleolithic era to modernity. It oozes time and financial investment through the craftsmanship and presentation, such as with the alleged and almost certainly fanciful explanation for Catalonia's symbol, the four red bars, stemming from the King of France dripping his fingers in the Count of Barcelona's wounds and running them down the Count's shield. Downstairs, a photo exhibition showed off scenes from the streets of Barcelona during the Civil War, a period when people from all over the world lent support to the ultimately doomed dream of Spain's Socialist Republic. I was glad these photos were being exhibited because they married so well with the scars of civil war which still blemish Barcelona today, which are still hearing and worth mourning. Tucked in a quiet corner, otherwise unbejeweled and ordinary, is a square in the old town, the Placa de Philip Neri, a courtyard where the old church walls still bear the shrapnel marks of a detonated fascist bomb killing 42 people, mostly children, who sought refuge in the church during a raid. Whew. Anyway, we stayed in the Armistad Beach Hostel. It is the usual passable grungy hostel experience. Walking tours, pub crawls, thin mattress bunks, and breakfast for a few euros with toast, sliced meats, egg, and fruit you can sneak out for lunch. Being in Poblenou, it's on the beach and close to the metro, so it ain't bad. And yeah, those are really the only thoughts I have on Barcelona. After several days by the beach, we took a long bus northwest into Huesca so that we could sweat out our sins and hangovers in the shadows of the Pyrenees Mountains. <laughs>